All right, I'm using Blender 4.4, and it should work on older ones though. Delete the default cube. Shift A, and let's get ourselves a circle uh, tab to get into the editing, and then F, add faces. Tab out, and scale it on down just a little bit, and I'll move it maybe a little bit south so it looks good in the camera. I'll hit zero for the camera, and that's actually fine for me. Uh, Shift A again, let's take care of our sparkle, which will be an icosphere, and I will go and adjust the um, uh, levels. Go to one, one is pretty good. Um, I'll hit N, and I'd like everything to be 0.5. Okay, that's a good size for me. Now, let's go ahead and do the shading of this next. Shader, open it up, I can see it there, new and get rid of the principles, delete that, shift A, and search for emission. Emission stands for inch. We'll go there and plug it in, and then next A will be a color ramp. Color ramp, there it is, plug it in there, color goes to color. Makes sense. Uh, first color will be, I don't know, um, you can pick as many as you want, uh, red. And then I will add another color, and this can be uh, green, I guess. And third color will be blue. Again, you can add as many, and if you want to um, make them tight together, you could also make sure the colors aren't anything in between. I just like them. So it could be any color here because we're going to go ahead and A, object, info, and use the random. So each time this is... Uh, instantiated or kind of brought into use, put to work, it's going to have a different color randomly from this chart here. Okay, that's it for the colors actually. So this is done. I'll just go ahead and move it away so it doesn't interfere. Zero for see what's in my scene. Okay, uh, going well so far. Uh, as always, especially with particle systems, save constantly. Um, but let's add the particle system. So I will click the circle and I will say particle system new. Um, let's go ahead and do about, I don't know, 7,500. And if I pushed play now, you'd see a bunch going southward. We don't want that. We want them going north uh, for this one. You can do anything you want, of course. Um, so let's just go ahead and say initial velocity will be uh, maybe four. And if you push play, now it goes north for a while, then gravity takes it south. Great. Um, it's also a little bit too bunched up, so I'll say randomize, give it a one, and now, now I got what I like. Um, to handle the, the dropping so fast, I can just go to field weights. Gravity, it's down here, and we'll go 0.2. Um, now, kind of goes up in the sky, wait for it to reach side. That's perfect. That's exactly what I did before, and that's what I like, so that's good. Now, all we got to do is put two and two together, so I will say when you render, close up that, close up that, when you render... Instead of rendering the default halo, render an object. We have our object. We made it, and it will be the icosphere. And it's good. Good idea to name all this kind of stuff. You know, emitter, spouter, whatever you want, sparkle. Um, I didn't yet. Um, if I rendered by pushing F12, I can kind of get an idea. Yeah, that looks like confetti, really. But you could also make this for confetti. Uh, let's go to the world properties and go ahead and bring this down to black so I can kind of see you know, what it looks like in front of black. If I render it again, yeah, I, I got exactly what I want out of this. And let's close up that window. Final thing we're going to do is go to compositing and say use nodes. Uh, what I do is drag over another window um, and then turn it back into my 3D viewport um, and then push zero for the camera. Um, it's kind of hard to see because it gets buried here on my screen, but world view and one more click will be coming down here to use the compositor, say always, and now I can see what the effects of the compositor looks like. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in just a little bit, make it easier for to see. Um, now, compositor, give myself a little room here. Well, I will go ahead and find glare. Okay, glare just pops in there and type of glare, I think we wanted streaks. And everything's good, except I'm not seeing anything. And that's because if I go to my shading and I go back to that icosphere, I want my emission strength up a little. It needs to be powerful enough to actually register. So now it's a five. That kind of gives it, it just turns it up, makes it hotter. Okay, so now, you know what? That's pretty much it.
that looks like what I did. You can turn it and do different things with it. OneNote, when you do export it, um, if you export an image, you have to do it over a black background. So if you try to use transparency, you're going to lose the, uh, the, the effect. Um, this is true for movies too. So you have to do really two of them, a PNG first, a set of PNGs with uh, transparency on, then a set of PNGs with transparency off. Um, and then kind of merge the two together. This is if you're bringing it into a video editor, which I did. But that's it. You can kind of see that. I'll hit F12 one more time, and you get an idea. Those are sparkles. Oh, well, all right, maybe not. The final thing, one last thing I think I would like to do is go back to my circle, my particle system, and when I render, I'm going to give it some randomness, if I can find it a little better. Oh. Wilmer F12. That's it. Those are the stars that I showed you earlier, and I hope this helps. You can do a lot of different things. Um, start the time, stop the time. Those are all finicky adjustments you can do here, but uh, that's my recommendation. Have fun with it, and if you like it, uh, leave a comment um, or a like or subscribe, whatever. It'd be cool, but you know, you do you, free world, soon quick. Cheers.